So in this problem, we're going to consider a tile that slides down a smooth roof inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal, with sine alpha equaling two fifths. It reaches the edge of the roof after five meters, and then falls eight meters to the ground below. Ignore air resistance. OK, let's draw a diagram so we can visualize what's going on. So here is my roof. OK. And here is the tile on the roof. We know that this distance here is 5 metres. OK? And this angle is alpha. And once it's got to the edge of the roof, it's going to fall 8 metres. OK? So here is the ground. Now, the question asks us to find the speed of the tile as it reaches the edge of the roof. So we're just going to consider this section now. And just because I'm considering that section, I am going to consider this point as ground zero. So completely ignore the fact that we are 8 metres above the ground. I'm just going to take that point as zero, uh, that height as zero, because that will just make my calculations easier to work with. OK? So I'm going to go straight in to the work energy principle. The initial gravitational potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy plus or minus the work done is equal to the gravitational potential energy final plus the final kinetic energy. So what I need is the initial gravitational potential energy. And because I'm taking that as zero, as that is ground zero, what I need is this height here, that distance. Now, if I draw that right angle triangle, then I know that that height has to be 5 sine alpha. And in the question, I'm told sine alpha is 2 fifths. So that means it's 2 meters tall. So we're initially 2 meters higher than where we finish up. So the gravitational potential energy will be m times g times h, which is 2. Now, I'm not told the mass of the tile in this question. What we'll find is that the mass cancels anyway, so I don't need it in the problem. Then we've got the initial kinetic energy. So we can assume that the tile starts from rest, OK, because it slides down the smooth roof. So uh, we're going to put that at 0, OK? Now, work done by any forces acting in the direction of motion. Well, there aren't any extra forces. We're ignoring air resistance. Uh, we, are in, we have no friction because it's a smooth roof. So there are no other forces to consider. Now, the final gravitational potential energy, when we get to the bottom of the roof, is just going to be 0, mg times 0 plus the final kinetic energy will be 1 half mv squared. So we have 2mg is equal to 1 half mv squared. So you can see that the m's cancel. So v squared is 4g. So that means that v is the square root of 4g, which is 2 root g. So if g was 9.8, we would get 6.26 metres per second to 3 sig fig. OK. Right, part B. Find the speed at which the tile hits the ground. OK, so now we're at this point. So I'll no longer consider that as ground zero. I'll consider this as ground zero. OK. So actually, we're starting 8 metres above the ground. So using the work energy principle, the initial gravitational potential energy will be mg times 8. Plus the initial kinetic energy. Well, I know what the speed of the object is at this point. It is 2 root g. 
So we'll have plus one half m times v squared, which is 4g. Again, we're ignoring air resistance, so there are no other forces acting uh, in the direction of motion. So we can ignore any of that. So that's going to be zero for the work done. The final gravitational potential g when I hit the ground will be zero. And the kinetic energy will be one half m v squared. So we have 8mg plus 2mg is equal to 1 half mv squared. So we've actually got 10mg is 1 half mv squared. And of course the m's cancel again. So v squared is 20g. So v must be the square root of 20g, which is 14 meters per second. OK, now, the point of this problem is that it's important to note that if you weren't doing this um, by uh, using energy methods, you might think, well, could I do this using A-level math techniques? Um, and assuming constant acceleration, yes, you could. The only problem is that your acceleration down the slope here is going to be different to the acceleration once it leaves the slope, once it leaves the roof. And so your problem becomes a little bit more complicated because you've got to, you've got to divide it up into two, um, two situations. Now, I did divide this up into two situations for this, OK, to answer part B using the answer to part A. But I didn't actually need to. So can I actually answer part B without having done part A? And the answer to that question is yes. Because if I use the work energy principle, the initial gravitational potential energy is going to be that height plus that height times mg. So I'm going to have mg times by 8 plus the 5 sine alpha. So 8 plus 2, which is 10. The initial kinetic energy, assuming that we're starting from 0, will be uh, with a velocity of 0, will be 0. Work done will be zero. The final gravitational potential energy, well, once it hits the ground, will be zero. And the final kinetic energy will be one half mv squared. So we've got 10 mg equaling one half mv squared. So the m's can cancel. The v squared is going to be 20g. So v is the square root of 20g, which is 14 metres per second. So you can see that actually uh, the work energy principle here, um, it doesn't really care what's going on with the acceleration of the particle. OK? Uh, it's independent of that. At no point in the calculation do I take account of the acceleration. So because the acceleration changes, you would have to do this in two pieces um, if you were doing it using uh, A-level maths techniques. Whereas with the work energy principle, you can do it in one fell swoop.